This is my Epo Maker TH66, and I'm not flipping it over right now because it will spoil what I did to the keyboard. You gotta stick around for that. If you're thinking about getting a 65% keyboard with wireless functionality and Bluetooth for less than $90, you might want to consider this one though. For full sake of transparency, I paid out of pocket for this keyboard. I paid 56 pounds. That was on Amazon. So if you are interested in picking up the keyboard, there will be an affiliate link in the description right below the like button. So let's get to unboxing the keyboard, shall we? Got a quick start guide here, which is pretty neat. The keyboard itself, and it's really nice that they include this dust cover because um, I don't know if you can see by my desk, it gets really dusty. The keyboard itself, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. So it comes with an extra few goodies on the inside as well. A keycap and key switch puller, which is nice to include. I see some extra blue Gatoron Pro switches. I don't like clickies. I'm going to chuck these anyway. Yeah, Gatron Pro Blue Switches. I am not a fan of clicky switches. I think they are the worst thing to exist within this space. Come at me. But if you are planning to pick up this keyboard, you can get the linear options like the black switches or the yellow switches or the red switches and maybe the brown switches if that's what you're into. They suck. Get over yourself. Hashtag linear gang. You also get some extra keycaps and novelties. So I believe these are for Mac settings as well, which is nice. And a 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter. And lastly, a braided white cable to match the keyboard, of course. So this is the keyboard itself. It's a really nice design. I like the yellow accents on the spacebar, the escape key and the enter key. I think that's really nice. The rotary knob is nice and smooth. Like it's got a click at each turn which is super nice. And the switch itself has a really nice tactile feeling to it when you press down on it, of course. Let's go ahead and turn the switch on the back here. And look at that, it's got RGB. I'll just let you hear what this keyboard sounds like stock because um, it wasn't it. my personal best are you kidding me <laughs> before we get into what modifications i did for the keyboard the stabilizers here are actually nutty stock they are fantastic they don't really need that much modifications but i did band-aid mod them the second more unorthodox mod that i'm doing to this keyboard i have never seen on youtube ever no one's done it silicone baking sheet mod. You heard that right. I've seen silicone pour molds. This is just a simpler option and I'm surprised people didn't really think about it. It's a really easy material to work with. You just cut around the foam sheet that came with it and it does a much better job at absorbing the sound. But because it's a denser material, in theory, it hopefully results in more fuck. Spoilers. I'm also putting PE foam switches on rather than using a PE foam sheet because I think it personally looks better on the board. And although it's more time consuming, I think it just makes everything look nicer. I ended up going with lubed and filmed Gatoron Black Ink V2s. And I'm so glad I did because they have such a deep and thocky sound. I went with those switches because it's basically what I had available without having to tear down other keyboards. So for the rest of the stock mods, I left the keycaps alone. I didn't feel like it was worth it at the time to buy other keycaps but i own gmk blue samurais and i put on gmk blue samurais and with this new gold knob that i also picked up oh it looks so good i'm a big fan of the way that this keyboard looks now i also wanted to try the stock keycaps because they're mda profile i won't lie getting used to them was really weird because the alphas just felt really homogenous if i had to be accurate in the way that they felt but they're really thick and high quality and definitely contribute to the focky sound that you'll hear in just a moment. Now that all the mods are done, how does the board sound? Amazing. The board sounds incredible. It sounds exactly what I wanted it to be, which is focky and a hint of marble. And I've got to say, the stabs sound fantastic considering how little work we had to do. 
Thanks, Factory Lube Job. The keycaps do contribute to the sound as well. They're MDA profile, very thick PPT keycaps, and they're surprisingly good quality. If you're looking to modify this keyboard, there are two caveats that I really have to point out, and they all have to do with the numeric row. The first caveat is that the top row is north facing, meaning that if you have cherry profile keycaps, you may run into some interference with the row one keys. And second is the one key itself. If you take a look at this screenshot, there is a raised SMD on that one key, meaning that you have to use switches with a pre cutout for SMD LEDs, meaning that Gatron Inc. Black V2 switches, like the ones that I just put in, won't fit without modification. You're either going to have to mod the bottom housing yourself or swap the bottom houses with ones that already came with the keyboard. And that's what I did. Frankly, because they're both manufactured by Gatron, that wasn't a big issue for me. But do bear that in mind if you do plan on modifying this keyboard. Would I still recommend this board after all of the work that I did to it? Yes. Yes, I do. The TH66 from Epo Maker would actually be a very fantastic offering had Keychron not announced the V2 keyboard as this video was in production. So if you would like to see a review on that keyboard, hit that subscribe button to get notified as and when I upload and sound off in the comments down below what you thought about the keyboard. How does it sound? How does it look? Are you going to pick one up? If not, don't worry. I appreciate the engagement either way. Have a fun one.